Hey there, avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop here on YouTube. Hope you're all having a great and wonderful day. So today we're going to be talking about Lightbringer by Claire Legrand. This is the final novel in her Imperium trilogy. And boy, um, it did not disappoint. I think what I really loved about the series is how compelling the characterization is. Um, Legrand is, does a great job with... Her characterization she does a great job building up these character dynamics and creating an intriguing story and you know this is what she's been building up to Lightbringer is the ending that Legrand has been building up to and I think it was so compelling um, But, you know, as much as I love the characters, we'll talk a little bit more about the characters in a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit about the story. Legrand does an amazing job with her storytelling. She's great with her, with her tension. She's great with her pacing. And she does a great job of creating a dynamic story. There are a lot of perspectives going on, you know. First of all, if you've been reading the trilogy, you know that Legrand goes back and forth between Riel and Eliana and those point of views are separated by a thousand years so their worlds are completely different and then you know the reader write what expects them to be they are so different and the reader already knows that Riel is the blood queen you know that's how King's Bane starts out She's the Blood Queen. And now the reader knows that Eliana is the Sun Queen. But how did Riel get to this point? How did this happen? And that's what the trilogy has really been about, building up her story, Riel's story, of how she became the Blood Queen. So any reader has been on this journey with her and gosh it just it makes it such a well-rounded story because she's just going back and forth between these perspectives in some ways it could be jarring because the reader's going back and forth but it really flows you know Legrand does a great job of ensuring that her story flows and she doesn't make she does a good job of making sure that these perspectives matter. I just read a book that included a perspective that added absolutely nothing to the story. You could have got done away with it. But in this novel, what Claire, Le Claire Legrand does is she uses these perspectives to give the story a well-rounded scope. We know what's happening with Riel. We, we know what's happening with Eliana, but what about the world around them? So she uses these perspectives to capture um, what is going on in the world around them, how things are changing because of them. And she also includes... Um, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, sorry. She also uses these perspectives to highlight the passage of time. That's what I want to say. She's not dull in her writing, let me say that. Because a dull writer would be like, weeks have passed by. And instead, you know, she inserts it into her dialogue. She inserts it into the storytelling. So you kind of know... Um, you know, when Eliana says after months of torture, you know, or when her friend Navi says we have to go rescue her and the shipbuilder says we will, but it'll take me three weeks to make a boat this fast. And Navi's like, I don't have three weeks, you know, things like that of na that nature. Legrand just kind of subtly inserts it so that the reader can so that the reader is aware of how much time is passing. And she does the same thing with Riel's story. She 
just kind of slips it in there so that she keeps the momentum of her story going. She keeps the pacing going. She's not distracting the reader by making them wonder how much time has passed. She's not distracting the reader by slowing down the pacing to point out how much time has passed. You know, that's really what Legrand does, what her biggest strength is. Her biggest strength is really in highlighting this strength, in highlighting um, on on staying focused on the story. That's what I want to say. She stays focused on the story. She keeps the momentum up. She keeps the tension up. She keeps the pacing up. So you're just engrossed in the story. I mean, at 600 pages, it doesn't feel like it. It you're just like blowing through it you can't put it down and i think that's really good you know when a story just sucks you in and you're just reading 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 you don't even know how much time is passing and you're unaware of how long it is i think that is the mark of a good writer and i also want to like i said you know we are going to talk about the characters i let me say this I am not Riel's biggest fan. I kind of hate her. But I pity her as well. Legrand does a great job of inciting emotion in the reader. She does an excellent job. She makes you hate them. She makes you love them. You love them. And you hate them. And I think that just showcases how these characters, not, none of them are black or white. You know, they're all shades of gray. And I think that's really, really realistic. I think that's very um, relatable because they all make a lot of decisions that you don't agree with, but you can understand why they made the decisions. Like Ludovine, you understand why she did what she did, why she, keep, why she kept her secrets. However... It didn't work out for her, clearly. <laughs> and you, in hindsight, you kind of just want to shake her and be like, no, you did the wrong thing. You know, she keeps trying to defend herself. And you understand why she's trying to defend herself for her decision. At the moment, when you were, if you were reading this novel, these, these novels, you understand that at the moment, her decision seemed wise. You weren't really thinking long term. You were just thinking in the moment, just like... Ludovine. I think she was more engrossed in this is what's best for the moment and then it just kind of got away from her. And that can be said for all the characters. They all do what they think is best at the moment or they say things they don't mean because of their emotions. There's a lot of depth to these characters and the reader is drawn in because of them, because of their dynamics. The reader understands them, even if the reader doesn't always agree with them. Like I said, I hate Riel. Um, she is not, <laughs> she is not um, my biggest fan. I, I think maybe, not my biggest fan. I'm not her biggest fan, let me say that. Let me correct my grammar right there. Um, yeah, no, Riel is terrible. She does a lot of unforgivable things in this novel, especially. She's drowning in her anger and her guilt and her grief and resentment. And I may not like it. I may not like her. But I understand where she's coming from, considering I've been on this journey with her. She tried so hard. She tried so hard to be what the people wanted. The Sun Queen. She tried so hard to be good for them, but nothing was ever good enough for them. There was always this fear of, she's the blood queen, she's the blood queen. Instead of just trying to push her to be the sun queen, you know, to give her that love and adoration that she's been lacking for most of her life um, since she was a child. Her father, he, he did love her in his own way. However, after the loss of her mother he really put up this wall between them and 
lacking the love of a parent really does jam damage an individual. So like I said, you know, I hate Riel. I'm not her biggest fan. She does a lot of unforgivable things in this novel, but at the end of the day, she still has my sympathy. She still has my pity because you saw the struggle, how she struggled so hard to be good for everyone. And you see why she ran into the arms of Corian at the, at the last novel, because he loves, he, he does love her unconditionally. Um, well, not unconditionally. He does have some conditions. But the conditions aren't restrictive to her as a, as a person and her power. He doesn't fear her power. He admires it. He, he does love her in his own twisted way. And he can give her the comfort that she needed at the moment. So it's, it's understandable. And now, as for Eliana, she's the complete opposite of her mother. And I think that's great. You know, these two characters work in tandem to give the story a perfect balance. Even though they are not in any scenes together until the very end, they work so strongly together. They're perfect foils. You know, Eliana really is a foil for her mother, Riel. And I think what makes Eliana better is she doesn't succumb. Her, she's had a hard life, you know. She does. She has had a hard life, but she did have the love of her parents. She did have have the acceptance of people around her. So you can kind of see uh, how their upbringing shaped them as individuals. How Eliana really is the Sun Queen, and how she doesn't let her power blind her. She doesn't let her anger blind her. She remains strong and good and she remains the, the Sun Queen. So I think that's really good how Legrand is able to create such captivating and compelling characters in this novel. You hate them and you love them and you pity them and you want to smack them. You know, if a story inspires the reader to have an emotion, I think the author did a really good job. And I think Legrand did an excellent job with this novel. It was a great conclusion. And at the end of the day, you know, it left me with hope in my heart. After everything, you are lifted up by some hope. And I think that's great how there's, how it leaves off on a high note. So this was Lightbringer by Clara Legrand. I'm going to go ahead and give this story mm, four and a half, five stars. It was so good. I want to give it that five star, but I don't know what's holding me back, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but something is. and I, But I can't put my finger on it. So four and a half, five stars is what I'm going to give Lightbringer. I definitely recommend it. You can purchase it off of bookshop.org. Um, and if money is tight, you know, just check it out from your local library. Libraries are a great resource for the community. Definitely deserve all of our support, just like books, booksellers and bookstores. And I hope you will continue to support me by liking this podcast and subscribing to it and sharing it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading. <laughs>